let me start. I was driving last week um, from where I was to Piazza, and I just stopped when I saw this view of this beautiful old building uh, against the backdrop of what's the new is coming. And I just sat for a moment, took this picture, and I asked myself, what do I see? Do I see fragility? Do I, do I feel that tension between the old and the new of more older traditional forms of architecture that to me represents our values, our identity, our heritage, our culture versus the new, which is kind of uh, tall, taller. It's very um, new, shiny. I think it's going to be shiny, most of it. And um, yeah, it was a very profound moment for me because this was a tension of where our city is. And myself as an architect, um, of course, this picture is not telling the whole story of what's happening in our city, obviously, but it tells where we're going or where our intention to go is. Uh, in this rapidly transforming uh, city in the last two decades, we grapple with this uh, as designers, as professionals, as residents. We grapple with this tension and find ourselves breathless, in fact, on the on the fastness of the growth, because when it's so fast, you really are not in control of either your urban fabric, your resident, um, the way you build, and the way you actually bring 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 ideas onto the ground. Um, so, though clearly, what we inherited in the built environment was by no means uh, the best example of a spatially inclusive planning where distribution of wealth uh, to all residents was equal. My question is, when we go towards fast urbanization, how are we building our buildings? How are we actually transforming the cities from the city scale to maybe when we go to the human scale where we are using uh, new buildings, new concepts, but actually, the, how we implement it is rather poor, very chaotic, and very unfit for our environment. So I go back to our identity, that we can live, that both can live together. Our sense of scale, the way we used to build our buildings, the way our tradition, our um, you know, um, unique indigenous styles of building, that's what we have to kind of learn from, even in our public spaces. These are our landmarks. Whenever there is road networks that are converging, we have beautiful landmarks against beautiful and um, set of buildings. What about our public spaces? We have enjoyed the spaces. Mescal Square is the way we, uh, where we meet up. And this is uh, an amazing um, identity for us through different regimes. So for me, the question, is how then, through this fast urbanization, how can we then build a livable city? And a city that we, and we've talked about what the livable city should be, but my question is, what about inclusivity? And how do we include within spatial planning as well as others, economic and otherwise, what do we actually do on the ground? Because I'm an architect and I'm so involved on on the ground thinking. How do we bring excellence? I mean, we're, we're doing all these mega projects. We're you know, expanding, we've done so many things in Addis. But how, why can not, we not uh, refer to excellence uh, as our uh, trademark? Because historically, Ethiopia has done amazing buildings. So again, going back, same space, but a little different perspective. I saw the soldier standing, and I felt, this is me speak. I mean, as a resident and not as, a, as an architect. Where am I in this? Am I a bystander? Am I part of this change? Am I part of the change that is building this nation, or part of this, uh, of, of, of this person that is standing by and not being part of a participatory process that actually uh, is my uh, main agenda today, 
where is the participation, where are we as residents, what is our stake? And this is on behalf of the people and behalf of myself. Thank you very much.